Well, good morning, everybody. Brother Leslie Wilds here, Pastor King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. Amen, amen. My hair's a mess. <laughs> amen. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I hope you are, friends. I know I am by the grace of God. Friends, it is Sunday morning, the 26th of September, Year of our Lord 2021, it is 8.15 in the morning. And first of all and foremost, I want to wish my daughter, Ariana, a um, wonderful, wonderful birthday. Happy birthday. And, um, you know, many more. <laughs> so, um, folks, welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm a bit under the weather. I apologize. I don't know what's going on, if it's a stomach deal or some sort of a... Um, I don't know, blood sugar or what. It just you know, wasn't my night last night. I was up and down about, you know, 10, 15 times. So. But the sermon must go on. Amen, amen. Just, just pray for me and all. Um, listen, before we start on the sermon, I want to lift up some folks in prayer. Um, Brian Kelly, King James Bible Baptist Church in New York City. They have pretty much taken away his place where he could set up. So just pray that he can find a place where he can set up his tables and chairs and Continue the ministry, continue winning souls to Jesus, continue giving tracts out, continue doing the things that he is called by God to do. Pray pray, pray that the Lord will bless his ministry abundantly. And also pray for Brother Dan Price, his ministry down there in uh, North Texas. And, um, you know, getting it together too. You know, there are a lot of Christians right now who are under the gun. And um, like they're losing their faith. Where's the Lord at? Where's the Lord at? You know, and he's like, he's coming. If you look at what's going on now more than ever, you need to be ready. Now more than ever, you need to be listening for that trumpet. Amen. You need to be listening for that. So, but anyway, we're going to be in the book of Philippians chapter four. And I'm going to start with verse number four. That's what we're going to be talking about. Maintaining positivity during negative times. Now, negative and positive is not in the Bible as far as the wordage and stuff goes. But I will be going over what the Apostle Paul is telling the Philippians and all about how, you know, basically how to have peace, perfect peace in your life and biblical peace and the peace of God in you, you know. And also, um, I'll be talking about that as well. So, um, Stick around, folks. We are live here on Facebook. So, <clears throat> folks, um, if you would like, please turn your open up your King James Bibles. If you don't have a King James, get what you got. Follow along best you can. All right. Go to Philippians chapter four. I'm going to start from verse number four. But before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Father, I pray that you give me unction and anointing to teach and preach his word, to go out and not come back void. Father, I pray that you would strengthen me physically as well, Lord, and give me the energy I need to, to finish this day off strong. Father, bless everyone who hears the word. Open our minds and our hearts to your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. And um, all right, Philippians chapter 4. Now, Here's the thing, you know, a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians are going through trials. And, you know, let me tell you something. If you're a born again believer, you know how the devil will put crazy stuff in your head. It's a nonstop bombarding, you know, of, of nonsense and lies and you name it and, and wicked things. And, you know, the devil will throw what he can at you. And that's just how it is. He, he, that's, <laughs> since, since, you know, the number one goal of Satan is to keep you from the cross. But once you get saved, his other number one goal is to make sure your walk with Christ is miserable. And and he'll do it too if you let him. That's why this is important. I will be talking about what the Apostle Paul told um, the Philippians, and we need to take this to heart. A lot of Christians, a lot of us Christians here, we're, we're, have a little touch of depression. Hey, when's he coming? I'm feeling miserable. This world is terrible, and it is. 
I'm ready to go too. I'm so sick and sick of the death of this world. It's not even funny. It makes me want to puke. I mean, blah, puke. That's how bad it is. I want to go home too. Believe me, every day, Lord Jesus, are you coming? Lord, are you coming? Are you coming? Hey, Lakana, <laughs> are you coming, Lord? And you know, a lot of people are feeling down, and you're going to need to hear this. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling like, you know, nobody cares or something, well, this message is for you. Because the Apostle Paul is, is, telling, is, is telling these folks exactly what they need to do. Now, let's, let's read it together. Hear ye the word of the Lord from the King James Holy Bible. <clears throat> Verse number 4, Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen, amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your minds and will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, here's the thing. Don't miss this. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard, and see in me do, the God of peace shall be with you. So what is he saying? What's going on here? First of all, the apostle Paul you know, it's telling folks, you know, that, that you know, be thankful to the Lord. Let's go back over this. Let your moderation be known to man, to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Okay, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto the Lord. That's right. With a thankful heart, ask the Lord for the things that you need. And also, as you're going through your day, there's going to be times you're going to feel run down. You're going to feel like you have been, um, you have been, um, you know, forgotten about it. You feel lonely and sad. Lord, where are you? That's why it's important to think on these things, the good things. Let's go over it. Let's go over what the Apostle Paul said. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Think about them things. Think about what the Lord did. Think, th think, about, think about what the apostles did. Think about what the Lord did for us and how much he loved us. Think about those things. Think about the fact that he did it all and paid it all for us, that by faith alone we have salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's all about salvation. It's not religion. Religion will send you to hell so quick it will make your head spin. Salvation is eternal life. It is the gift of God. It is the gift that none of us deserve. None of us. But yet, God so loved you and I, he became a man. Allowed his own creation to nail him to a tree and brutalize him. The God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth. Think on that. Think about how much he loves you. Think about his, that he went to the cross. You're not going to lose your salvation. You can't. And any fool that will tell you that is a fool. And he's calling the Lord Jesus Christ a liar. And that person needs to repent. Fact. Think of those things, friend. Think of those things that are good. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whosoever, whatsoever things are of good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Otherwise, if it's something good, think about it. Think about what the Lord done. Think of his goodness, and that will pick you up. Let me tell you something, friend. 
God became a man and took care of it. He's got it covered. I don't care what kind of problem you have. There's nothing that he can't handle. Hey, friend, if you have any kind of problem at all, the Lord wants you to take it to him in prayer. That's right. Take it to him in prayer. Get in your little, get in your little quiet space and ask the Lord for guidance and for wisdom. And think of those things. You know, you know it's an evil world we live in. And, you know, we see the evil of men. It's all over the news. And we see what's going on in the world and how this world is turning. And it's it, it's sickening. And as a born-again believer, you know, I'm chomping at the bit like so many others. When are you coming, Lord? When are you coming? And, you know, I got I to gotta keep myself from feeling down. I got to feel keep from feeling depressed. Because, you know what? Satan's going to work on you. He's going to work on you. He works on me. He works on every believer. If you're a child of God and you love the Lord and you read your Bible and you study and all that bit, he's going to come at you. He's going to come at you. That's why it's important. Absolutely important. But think on those things that give us joy and give us peace. Think about what he did for us. No one in the history of humanity, no one in the history of the universe ever done what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. That is the most important event in the history of the universe. The most pivotal event when the Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross. Because there's the Redeemer that crushed the head of the serpent. He came, he was born, lived a sinless, perfect life. And willingly, friends, he willingly went to the cross. You know, he could have easily called the angels and say, hey, angels, wipe these people out. He could have, but he didn't. You know what? The fact is, friends, that we need, as Christians, we need to be positive. And I'm not talking, you know, positivity and negativity. I'm talking about biblical positivity. I'm talking about, as the apostle said, Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. You know, um, that's the thing. It's not a real long sermon. It's about getting it together. Sometimes we need to hit the pause button, step back a little bit, see where we're at. And a lot of times it's counting our blessings too. We don't do that near enough. I know I don't. I'm guilty as I'm guilty as can be. I don't nearly count my blessings near. And that's what it's talking about here. Counting your blessings. Thinking of those things. Because let me tell you something, friend. This world is passing away very, very quickly. This world is so horrendously sinful and wicked. It's, I've, I've never seen it such. Never. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And the fact is that we, the believers, the church, the body of Christ is here on earth. You know, we need to be making headway. We need to be bringing people to the Lord. We need to let people know what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. It's the only way it's going to work, friends. It's the only way it's going to work. And if we share our faith, you know, get out there and do what we're supposed to do. Lost person, let me tell you something. If you're not saved, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you, friend, you're missing on the greatest relationship that you can ever have. There's not a greater relationship than having a relationship with the Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. There's no, there's no greater, no greater relationship, no greater love that God has for us. God loves you and I so much. You, you and I can't even comprehend. You and I think we know about love. We don't know nothing. We know nothing. The only thing we know is sin because that's what we're in a body, a sinful body, in sinful nature. It's all we can do. But praise God for the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. 
gives us eternal life. You know, um, it's real easy to be negative. You know, I can look at the world and I can say, oh, this has happened, and it is. It's how I approach it. See, I know that a Redeemer's coming. I know my Lord's coming. I know for too long I'll be out of this disgusting cesspool called planet Earth. Why is it a disgusting cesspool? It's full of sin. Christ rejecting, God rejecting. Tribulation's coming. It's coming, friends. It's coming. I'm not, I'm not here to scare you. I'm telling you the truth. Very, very soon, things are just going to come loose. Things are going to fall apart all over the world. You talk about chaos and trouble, it's coming. It's coming. You know, friend, let me tell you something. If you're not saved, if you're not a Christian, you're missing out on the greatest relationship of all. At any time, the Lord Jesus Christ can call the church home and those left behind are going to deal with tribulation, the likes of which mankind has never, ever, ever, ever experienced. The Lord Jesus Christ even made it clear that this tribulation time will be like no other, okay? We need to be on guard and, you know, being positive. I mean, you know, talk about positive and negative not being in the Bible. Well, this is positivity. Whatsoever, brethren, things are true. Whatsoever, things are honest. Whatsoever, things are just. Whatsoever, things are pure. Think on those things. Think on those things. Yeah, it's real easy to think about the, about the stuff that'll bum you out, you know? But if we need to think about and dwell on what the Lord did, dwell on his goodness. Think about that trip he made to Calvary. Dwell on that a while. <laughs> You'll soon get put in your place. All I got to do is sit back and think of that walk that my Lord walked. After they beat him and they beat him and he walked and he carried that cross all the way to Calvary. You know, I got to think about that every day in order to keep myself <laughs> straight. I have to remind myself daily what the Lord did for me. And we need to remind ourselves too. We need to be reminded of that painful walk that he took from the praetorium where they whipped him all the way to the cross and onward six hours more. He hung on the cross. You know, friends, um, you know, I can complain about a lot of things. Oh, I ain't making enough money. I haven't had a whole lot of donations. Oh, you know, this is my kids don't do this, my kids, whatever. I can think of a lot of reasons to complain. I can think of a lot of reasons. <laughs> and guess what? I'd be right, too. But you know what? It, that doesn't help me out. If it's something that's out of my control, why should I stress out about it? You hurt yourself. I'm hurting myself when I do that. You know, when we when we think about stuff and worry about stuff and stress out about stuff that we have no control over, well, Satan's laughing at us. The devil's laughing at us. And we hurt ourselves. And then pretty soon it turns into self-pity. Woe is me. If you're born again Christian, you shouldn't be woe with me. It should be, woohoo, I'm saved by the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving an undeserving, worthless, filthy sinner like me. Amen. You know, it's real easy to think about the negative. It's real easy to think about what Joe Blow did to me or somebody did to me or what's going on in the news and being patriotic, you know, I try to keep the t I try to keep the news off because you know what it just angers me, and you know I realize that this is part of the plan. This is part of the end times that, we're, that I am here, and we are living in one of the most fascinating times and one of the most um, awesome times. If you're a born again believer, and you're going to think to me, what is awesome about this crazy world? Because we're getting out. We're getting out, friends. We are getting out of this cesspool. This sinful cesspool very soon. Just like the Bible talks about, for the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the rest of us will go up in with them. But the fact is, we need to be positive, friends, during these times. These times are not easy. 
you know, with the, with this with this virus business and this all these shot mandates. I mean, friends, it's up to you what you do with that. You know, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to fight it till the end. You know, my body, my choice, my body's temple, Holy Ghost, and I'm not going to corrupt it with an experimental medication. Sorry, I'm not, not going to do it. That's up to you what you do. But here's the thing, friends. If you're a Christian and you're not happy and you're feeling miserable, you need to sit back and you need to take in. You need to look back at the picture. You need to step back and see what he done for you. And all the things that he that he has done, you need to see that and rejoice. I mean, if you're a born-again Christian, you've got salvation. You're saved. You're not going to hellfire, praise God. Neither am I, <laughs> although I deserve it. But I ain't going there. Why? Because I trust the Lord. And there's times I feel down and out like, Lord, are you coming? And the devil tries to put thoughts in my head about doubt, doubting my salvation. Is the Lord going to come or is it just fairy tales? I know better. I know what the Lord said and I know what he says is true. And I know without a doubt he's coming back real soon. Okay. So as Christians, we need to be thinking positively. Now, again, positive and negative. I'm not, not doing this power of positive thinking business. But it's in the Word. And the Apostle Paul's letting these Philippians know, hey, think on these things. Think on these good things. You know, if we think on good things, our mood will be better. I know that much. You know, I can think about something somebody did to me, and it'll bother me. And I can think on it, and I can dwell on it, what happened and what happened, and pretty soon I'm getting mad. Yeah. Over oh, something happened a long time ago or whatever. You know, it's real easy for us to get mad and real easy for us to dig up old things and dwell on those. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you miserable. He don't want you happy. He don't want you rejoicing. He don't want you praising the Lord. He wants you miserable. So he can see, hi, see there, Jesus ain't nothing. Look, you're a Christian, you're born again, you're miserable. Look at you. And the devil come to you and said, yeah, you should have chose me instead. I'd give you money and I'd give you all this and girls and this and this and this. Liar. But well, that's what Satan does. He's going, he gets in there and messes with your head and lets you know, oh, you're, you're, you're a failure. Now, I don't know how many times I had the devil come against me and say, oh, you're, you're, you've got a small place. You're just wasting your time. These people don't care. Why are you wasting your time doing these sermons? You know, devil, I'm, I'm doing my job. And the fact that it bothers him as much as it does that I do, he comes at me. And I have to think of the positive things. I really do. Because when I get under the gun, boy, do I get under the gun. And it's very important to think about. I have victory in Jesus. You're born again, believer. You got victory in Jesus. He did it all. He paid it all. He's our champion. Amen. Amen. So, friends, you know, um, think about those things. Think of the good things. Think of the things that the Lord did for us. Think of all the things he did, the people that he healed. People that were didn't deserve to be healed. He even healed Gentiles. The servant of that Roman um, centurion was healed. Think of the good things that he did. Let me tell you something, friends. Once the Lord comes for us, eternal retirement to good things. Oh, my goodness. We, we have no idea. I, I have no idea. I can't explain to you what, what heaven's like because I've never been there. But I've got a feeling, friend. And then Jesus, Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. So every born-again believer has got housing in heaven. And I'm here to tell you, friends, I don't know. I've never saw a house in heaven before. But I'm here to tell you, I, I firmly believe that the smallest, most humble place in heaven for the most, you know, lowest of the saints or whatever is still nicer than any place on earth. Your dwelling place in heaven, brother and sister Christian, is going to be nicer than anything you have ever experienced here on earth. I don't think I'm even going to be home. I'll just come by there every now and then. I'll be too busy worshiping the Lord and serving the Lord however he wants me to do it. Now I want him to put me to work, even in the millennium. 
I want to work for him, you know. It's, not, it's, it, it's been a pure blessing. It's been been the greatest experience in my life to, to be an evangelist and to teach the Word of God, and especially here on the video and with this little storefront church I planted. It's been a blessing, you know. And I got to think of all those good things. You know, October 1st is we're going to start our third year here at King James Bible Baptist Church. So the Lord has been here with me through it all. And I think on those good things, and it helps me out. Friend, think on those things that make you a better child of God. Think on those things that the Lord did. I promise you this. I promise you this, that um, you will be happy. You will be a lot happier. Think about these things, friends. Think about the things that the Lord did. Think about how much he loved you. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you, friend. That he became a man. He became a man. For you and for me. That by trusting in him and what he did on the cross, we would have eternal life. You know, people practice religion all day long, thinking that they're going to get to heaven by working for it. Doing this and that and this and that. There is no works. Salvation is a gift. Call upon the name of the Lord today. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know you died for me on the cross and rose again according to the scripture. Lord, save me now. Save my soul, Lord. That's all you got to say. Friend, let me tell you something. Don't you dare die without Jesus. Hell is an eternal place, not designed for mankind. It was created for the devil and his angels, the Bible says. Friends, I'm here to tell you right now, salvation is the greatest gift. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not born again, you need to get saved right now. Your eternal soul will live forever in one of two places. And one of those two places are your choosing. God sends nobody to hell, friend. He just respects your decision. What must I do to be saved, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Friends, now more than ever, we need to be looking up. Now more than ever, we need to love one another. Now more than ever, brothers and sisters in Christ need to put aside their differences, come together in one accord, for the Lord. Now is not the time for division. Now is not the time for infighting. Now is the time for salvation. Friend, you need to get saved. Don't you dare change that channel, turn that deal without getting saved. Let me tell you something. The greatest gift of all is salvation pay for on the cross. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, friends, and thou shalt be saved. This Brother Leslie Wiles, pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, Garden City, Kansas. You know, I'm feeling better already. You know it? I'm feeling better already. Folks, thank you for your time, and thank you for um, allowing me in your home. And just pray for this ministry. I'm praying for y'all. I'm praying for everybody. Praying for this country. Praying for this world. Also, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, friends. Pray for the Jewish people that would come to know Jesus. God is not finished with them. Not even close. Okay. I love y'all in the Lord. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you all, beloved. And remember, keep looking up. For our redemption draweth nigh. Peace.